Are you struggling to work out where to put your marketing budget? Well, today we're gonna to cover the most popular digital marketing techniques and try to work out exactly where you should put your budget, time and effort. Most successful businesses agree that your marketing budget should be between 12 and 20% of your gross revenue, with that percentage dropping as you become more established. Remember, over time, your percentage may drop, but your cost will probably rise in line with your increased revenue. If you're not currently putting any money into your own marketing, don't worry, you're not alone. In fact, 20% of businesses don't have a marketing budget. Now, when you consider the fact that 20% of businesses fail within their first year and a whopping 60% fail within their first three years, it's definitely worth considering putting some time and money into your marketing. It can be difficult to decide to put your hard-earned profit back into your business, but if you think about it, if you don't change anything about your business, your business will never improve. There are many different types of marketing that you can engage in. The level and effort that you should put into each will depend on your business model and goals. When you consider the different methods available to you, think about your hourly rate. After all, time is money, and this can help you work out when it's time to bring in a professional. Now, every business is different, so I can't go into specifics, but I can give you an overview of a business plan that works for most businesses. Phase one, setting your foundations. Before we start bringing leads and sales in, we wanna make sure that we get the most of our efforts by putting in a solid base. And this foundation starts with your brand. Branding is more than just a logo. Of course, it includes your logo, but it also includes things like your mission statement, your values, and the overall design. It's all about the customer's experience and how you wanna represent yourself to the outside world. With branding, understanding your target audience is key. It's not about you, it's about them. So try to make sure that whatever decisions you make are geared towards their needs and not your own. For example, if your favorite color is pink, but you find that your target audience reacts better to green, go with the green. Now with your brand assets in place, it's time to build a website. And they use the term build rather than design or develop because it more accurately describes what it is you're trying to do here. When planning your website, it's important to think about its purpose. It's easy to be distracted by animations and nice looking graphics, but at the end of the day, you need to make sure that you're taking your visitors and turning them into customers and clients. Are you hoping to sell a product or get a new lead into your funnel? Either way, you need to make sure that you have a process in place to make this as easy as possible. Websites should include information about your company so that people can understand your goals. If you've got your targeting right, your visitors should line up with those goals too, and it will make them more likely to trust you. So now your customer's happy, you wanna work out what it is that you need to achieve from getting people to your website. And that can be as simple as just adding an add to cart button to every page, or as complex as a six month long email nurture campaign. It will depend on your business. Building your brand and setting up your website takes time. If you wanna do this yourself, you can expect to spend around two months, including research time to do this. If you go to a marketing agency, you can expect to pay upwards of 4,000 pounds for a service like this. I would say that if you do end up doing everything else yourself, consider just doing the branding with a professional. The exercises that you're gonna complete with them are gonna really inform all of your marketing going forward, and it's important to get them right. Phase two, lead generation. So now we know who we're talking to, what they want, and we've set up a website to deal with the leads and sales. It's time to start bringing traffic. Once again, we want to think about the two different sides of the transaction when we come up with our marketing strategy, you and your client. For your customer, we're going to delve into content marketing. In a nutshell, content marketing is when you give something away for free. When you do this, what you're actually doing is proving that you understand your target market and you're making yourself more useful than your competitor who's maybe not giving as much away. With content marketing forever growing in popularity, it's important to interact on social media daily and aim to create new content at least once a week. It doesn't have to be anything too flashy. You just need to write a blog post or add an article to your social media. Both of those could be considered a form of content marketing. We actually already made a video about content marketing, so I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested. If you're really smart, you'll set up some form of free download in exchange for an email address, which will make it much easier to follow up with the people who found your content useful in the first place. To get that free download up and running properly, I suggest you use a CRM as a customer relationship manager. We really like ActiveCampaign for this, so I'll leave a link to it down below. ActiveCampaign helps you build an audience and follow up with them automatically via email. A quality marketing company would charge upwards of £2,000 a month for a service like this, and the Active Campaign software that I mentioned earlier on starts at $9 US per month. 
To make sure that people actually read your content, you're gonna to wanna to spend some time on SEO, that's search engine optimization, and social media marketing. For SEO, you'll need to do some keyword research to work out what people are searching for in your industry and how you can help. You'll need to optimize your blog posts to rank for this keyword. The more optimized articles that you have, the better your Google rank will be, and the more likely it is that you'll end up in one of those top spots in the Google search results. SEO is a long burn marketing technique. You might not get any good results for the first six months, but once it gets going, there's really no upper limit. For social media, you need to work out which platform is most useful to you. Is your audience mainly on Facebook or TikTok? Whatever the case, following your peers and interacting with your target audience is the key to understanding which conversations you should be involved in and which articles and posts that people will find most useful and most interesting. So with content marketing keeping your customer happy, it's time to think about your own needs. And for that, we're gonna delve into digital advertising. Digital ads are the best way to get your product or offering directly in front of your target audience. Google and all the social media platforms offer some form of advertising program. For social ads, YouTube ads, and the Google Display Network, you set up targeting to show your ad to a specific audience. You can set things like age, sex, location, and interest to work out who the ad should be targeting. With Google search ads, you pick a specific keyword or key term and show up above the organic search results. Remember that these show up above anything you might have tried to rank with SEO. So all the while your ads are running, you'll pay a small amount of money every time someone clicks on one. The more ads you've got running, the more data you can gather. So all you need to do is remember to switch off the ones that aren't working very well and double down on those that are. Each ad's gonna cost a different amount of money when clicked. I'd recommend setting a monthly budget of about a thousand pounds to begin with, as that's the first chance you'll get to get any reasonable data out the back end and work out what's working and what's not. If you decide to get a marketing company to help you out with your digital ads, expect to pay a minimum of a thousand pounds a month for them to manage it. But bear in mind that most marketing companies will make you more than you're spending. Phase three, analyze. You should track everything you do so you can gauge its effectiveness. Products like Google Tag Manager, Google Analytics, and Facebook Pixel will help you do this. Even if you're only running these things on your own and you're just a one person business, you should really consider writing everything down into a report so that you can reference it back later on. On a regular basis, abandon anything that's not working so well and put more budget into the things that are. If literally nothing is working for some reason, you need to check your data and work out why that might be and then try something completely new. Don't worry, no marketing strategy is perfect. There's always something you can do to improve it. If you're working with a decent marketing company, they're gonna give you all of the analytic reports that you need. They'll also probably meet with you regularly to discuss the results and brainstorm new ideas. So now you have the basic phases and understand the sort of time and money that you need to put into marketing, you should be able to put together a quick strategy. Let us know how you get on in the comments down below and feel free to ask any questions. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye.